Occam's razor is the problem-solving principle which suggests that the simplest solution tends to be the right one. When presented with competing hypotheses to solve a problem, one should select a solution with the fewest assumptions. Unfortunately, that principle is lacking appreciation in the modern science community concerning the heliocentric globe Earth model. One of the main issues I find with the heliocentric model is that it is built on assumptions. You have to assume that once upon a time an explosion occurred without a trigger. You have to assume that black holes actually exist. You have to assume that dark matter is a real thing. You have to assume that people are walking around upside down thousands of miles beneath your feet relative to your position on Earth due to an imaginary force called gravity. Belief in that myth leads one to assume without question that large bodies of water actually have measurable curvature. Recently, a friend of mine and myself conducted a live laser test on the Puget Sound. During that live stream in front of an audience of about 150 people, we were able to see the source of Mark's laser from 10.3 miles away. According to the GLOBE model, I shouldn't have been able to see the source of Mark's laser from across the water due to the bulging water in between us. Unsurprisingly, there were those people who would blame that occurrence of being able to see the source of the laser from that distance on all sorts of convoluted ideologies in order to maintain their globe earth fantasy. They blame things like light dispersion, beam divergence, and of course, refraction and atmospheric gradient. Totally negating the nature of lasers, which is typically to show when a surface is level. They use all these excuses to avoid the most obvious conclusion, which is the crux of Occam's razor. And that conclusion is that when water accumulates to a point to where it touches all edges of its container, that the surface is flat. As much info as I gave, as much data as was provided, as obvious as this was that you could see the blue dot from across that stretch of water, and there was even a time where I lowered the camera to the point where it was on the ground and we were still able to see the blue dot while I was live streaming from my phone. Uh, it was on the ground. Then I picked it up, and I brought it forward, and got to a point to where it was almost in the water. Just inches above the water, brought it down, and you could still see the laser beam, or the source of the laser, from across the water. So let's look at a few things that back up the fact of the flatness of the surface of water. A feature in Google Earth is that you can set up lines that measure from one point to another. And when you... Uh, click on the details of those points you can look at the different properties of the distance between those points you can look at uh, exactly the length of it you can look at one thing in particular I'd like to point out is the elevation profile now what the elevation profile shows is obviously from one edge to another and what happens is when you zoom in here you see this red line there's an arrow that shows on the map while you're dragging the cursor across the surface on the elevation profile. Now, keeping that in mind, you can look up from one place to another and every time that you see the red arrow go across a surface of water, it always flattens out. Almost as if there's zero elevation over water. Kind of looks like uh, Google Earth forgot to curve the water. And that's... uh just part of this measurement that I took here from these two points. Uh, you can name these tabs and this one I named Kamichi to Kent if I'm not butchering that too bad. But then I uh, looked at two spots. The line that I drew from Kamichi to Kent went over the Puget Sound in particular the area where Mark and I conducted the laser test. You can see the red arrow dragging over that 10.3 mile stretch of water. So we'll back it out a little bit and we'll get rid of that one. Zoom back in on this one and show the elevation profile. And it would seem that from those two points that the surface of the water is flat according to the elevation profile. You can zoom in and zoom out take a little time I'll go back across the water to my point and that's where I was on Owen Beach or at Saltwater State Park Mark was actually at Owen Beach that's my position right there right about where I was at 
So I'll back it out a little bit more. And that's the path of the laser. The red line there. So then, I'll go back down here and just drag the arrow across. And the entire time, Google Earth is showing that there's zero elevation from one point to another. Almost as if the surface of water is flat. Almost as if the result of seeing the blue beam from the laser from across the water was due to direct line of sight. Now that we've established that Google Earth doesn't demonstrate any elevation changes over the surface of water, let's zoom in on my position on the beach at Saltwater State Park during that laser test. I dropped a pin at that location. During the live stream, I wanted to show the audience where I was in my position and all. So I panned across the water showing the sunset and you know the surface of the Puget Sound. And one thing we noticed is this building right here. So after we caught that building, I panned the camera back to the left side. Now the thing is that the beach is actually pretty small and there's a little uh, rope. There's a boundary between the beach and the private property on the other side. Using this video we can also match up these houses. This is video that I took from Mark's position at Owen Beach at Ruston Way. My P900 was about eight and a half feet above the surface of the water and I was able to zoom across the water and catch these same buildings with absolutely no problem. So you see this one building here. And on the other side of the beach there's a little restroom up the hill. And then you can also match up these houses. Now seeing as how we've established my position on the beach uh, between those two positions on the other video, it's safe to assume that my position on the beach in this video would be right about here. And that shouldn't be possible because there should be 60 feet of curvature between us. Even that little building, I'd be willing to bet, isn't 60 feet above the sea level. So then we uh, zoom back out across the water, showing that I was in Mark's position. Fade in the laser from the video, once again demonstrating direct line of sight. Now here's another quick example of direct line of sight, showing the interaction between where I was at, where Mark was, but especially, you want to watch this boat, because when that boat goes in between us, Mark says, Okay, you seen it here, folks. All right, cool, cool. Shut it down. So in this video, I'm the one operating the lights. I have the laser and a survival flashlight that I purchased a few years ago. And Mark is on the other side with my P900, and he's going to zoom in on my position. And first, we start by establishing my position. That was the video of me on the beach during the laser test then I fade in with the next video just to show you where I am that strobe light right there I got you right now alright yeah you got, you got the strobe we're fine that was kind of what we yeah, got, I got you. anyway Hey Daryl, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Yeah, I got you zoomed in right now on the strobe. I got the strobe right now from where I'm at. Perfect. Perfect. All right, cool. I'm 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 37 inches above the water to the middle, very middle of the camera lens on the P900. All right, so here are a couple pictures that Mark took of the P900 from uh, where he was at, facing my position. There's the 27 inches from the tripod on the steps and each of the steps was six inches the tide had gone out a little bit from the time he took these pictures to the time that we're recording so 37 inches i think that's fair all right you said all you're right, 37, you said you're 37 inches, inches above the water, above the water. You just check it? yeah all right well here let me uh, let me uh, go ahead and measure my 
Uh, as far as, as, far as how high the snow is, is off the ramp. Off the ramp. Okay, so here's a quick video of me doing the measurement of the mic stand that was holding the flashlight and the laser. Uh, while I was out on the beach, I said 34 inches because the flashlight was tilted downward. So I uh, raised the flashlight to about where it's level and measured 36 inches here. Okay. It's about 34 inches above uh, the base of this thing, so we can add on another yeah, another six inches. And still, if you can see it, uh, can you can you turn the the strobe on, on full on solid? Huh? Turn the light on solid. All right. All right. And stop. All right. So, All right, so I just changed up the battery, up the battery then the laser. Okay, I got. Okay, turn on the laser real quick. It's on. You just did. It's, it's on. on. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, point. Yeah, I'm picking up faint, faint blues because it's. I'm not getting the beam right at me, but I can see it. Well, I'm zooming out. I'm gonna zoom back in. Yeah, we. I can pick it up. It's just real faint. Oh, there it is. Stop right there. Here, here. Go back just there. Right there. Now go back. Right there. Right there. Right there. Don't move. I got it. Recording. Recording. Yep. All right. All right. Awesome. Awesome. Alright, so yeah, that laser ain't even, uh, like a little bit, like over, a little two bit feet. over two feet off the ground. Yeah, there's, there's quite a bit of interference. Huh? Uh huh? There's quite a bit of interference, but I got it. Cool. Cool. Is that strobe still going? Yep. Yep. Yeah, okay. it's mixing in with it. I got both lights. Alright, here, All right. hold on. Here, hold on. Strobe's off. I don't see it now. There it is. Hold on. Hold on. Strobing. Strobing. Got it. So you got the strobe so and the laser? Move the laser a little bit. Uh, uh, uh. All right, dying. All right, dying. Oh, oh, died. Yeah, it's getting dark. I'm gonna get going, but I'm gonna back. I'm gonna zoom back out to show the distance. Yeah, yeah. This is a long ways. Got it. Got it. Yeah, I'm right about. And right now, I'm about 37, 38 inches off the water. I'm zooming back in on you. Okay. Okay. I still got the strobe, I still got the strobe going. going. Uh, I can uh, I can try, 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 try to laser one more time. And, and laser is on. I got it. I got both of them. Awesome. Right, Turn that laser. Time. Yeah, try to move that laser to the right a little. Yeah, I got it. I got both of them, so we're good to go. That video was taken on August 29th. Mark's location was Owen Beach at Point Defiance. My location was at Saltwater State Park in Des Moines, Washington. The distance between us across the water was 10.3 miles. The air temperature that day was 62 degrees Fahrenheit. The water temperature that day was 53.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Visibility, by the way, was 10 miles all day. projected curvature was supposed to be 70.2 feet. The missing curvature came out to be about 66.2 feet. Now in the next short videos we're in the same locations on October 10th at approximately 835. Only this time there's a laser on my end and on Mark's side. The video that Mark impressed and recorded 
is now in the lower left hand corner. All right. All right, bring it back, bring it back to the, yeah, to your right. Oh yeah, right there, right there, right there. Right there. Right there. There's five. That's five. That's perfect. I think you're, I think you're a little high. Bring it down a little bit. Okay, yeah, that's perfect. Right there. Right there is good. Yeah, I'm on. Can you see me? Switch angles and the video in the lower left hand corner is being recorded from mine and Kendall's position. All right. That footage was recorded on October 10th at approximately 8.35 p.m. The locations were Mark and Preston were at Owen Beach at Point Defiance. Myself and Kendall were at Saltwater State Park in Des Moines, Washington. The distance over the water was 10.3 miles. The air temperature was 54 degrees Fahrenheit. The water temperature was 55.2 degrees Fahrenheit. Visibility was 10 miles. Projected curvature was 70.2 feet, and the missing curvature was 66.2 feet. So if you've made it this far, then you've seen that Google Earth doesn't display any curvature over stretches of water. You've seen me zoom across a 10.3 mile stretch of water with my P900 showing buildings and a beachfront that should have been hidden behind the supposed curvature of the Earth. And you've seen another example of direct line of sight by being able to view multiple light sources across a 10.3 mile stretch of water when those light sources should have been hidden behind the curvature of the earth. So if water doesn't start to curve at 10 miles, maybe over 20. Nope, this 20 mile stretch shows that Google Earth didn't make up for it. Maybe it's over a 60 mile stretch of curvature. No? No changes in elevation there. There doesn't seem to be any changes in elevation over this stretch of 180 miles over the water either. Even when they use animation to artificially superimpose curvature, there's still no change in elevation over the surface of water over a stretch of over 1,000 miles. The bottom line of this discussion between flat versus globe comes down to whether or not there's any measurable curvature. And if the Earth's surface is covered in water, and it's been proven that the surface of water lays generally flat, then how is it that we could be living on a globe? That's all I got for this one. As always, be good to each other, take care of yourself, and stay flat. I'll see you next time. Thank you.